What is going on, Adventure Nation? Just a word of warning, this is not gonna be one of our typical travel videos. I'm actually going to do a video that I don't do a whole lot of, and that is a how-to video. This particular one, how to clean your carburetor on your own and generator and get your generator running a little bit better. Now, I usually don't like to do these because inherently you'll have some armchair quarterback of a mechanic saying you should have done this or use this tool or that tool or whatever. And that's great when you have a huge garage full of tools, but normally when we're out RVing, we don't have that available to us. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the time when you turn on your generator, you're gonna be out in the middle of absolute nowhere and you're gonna have you know, a small bag of tools or you're gonna have very few tools available and you're gonna have to do the best you can do. Now, in this case, you're gonna need some carburetor cleaner for sure, so you might have to make a trip to a local auto parts store or to a Walmart if there's one available. And normally there's going to be a small a hardware store or somewhere that's gonna be somewhat close to you that you can get a some carburetor cleaner. And I highly recommend actually that you just keep some with you in your coach at all times. It's something very handy for cleaning all kinds of stuff, getting grease and things off of other parts as well. You're gonna need some carburetor cleaner or something similar. Uh, carburetor choke cleaner, brake cleaner would even work. And just a few tools, some smaller screwdrivers, uh, probably a 14 and a 15 millimeter uh, wrench. And if you don't have that, a couple of really good crescent wrenches will work for you. It is a very, very simple thing to do. So with that being said, this is, as my friend Vic likes to say, a way of doing a carburetor cleaner. There's the right way, there's the wrong way, and there's a way, and this is kind of a way, so check it out. Okay, I wasn't gonna record any of this because it's just a pain in the butt to do that, but I figured if this video helps anybody, at least one person, then why not? So I've got an Onan 5500 generator here, the marquee gold, don't know what that means, don't care. This bad boy isn't running right now. And it's not running right now because you're supposed to start them every now and then to you know let fuel run through them let them power up clear their coils and do all that stuff to make sure that they're running on a regular basis but ever since lorena and i became solar snobs we don't use it anymore this thing probably hasn't run in i don't know two years i tried starting it up a little while ago just before we come down on this trip to mexico and it wouldn't start and so I replaced the fuel pump and the filter, which was an easy replacement. And I didn't record that, of course. And that didn't help. It fired up, but it would not stay running. So we're gonna pull the carburetor off and clean that up because what happens is that uh, fuel will sit in a carburetor bowl and it evaporates and as it evaporates, it leaves gel. And it'll gel the jets, it'll gel some of the, the, the channels that fuel have to run through and things like that, then it doesn't run. So that's what I'm assuming is going on here. So we're gonna pull this off and we're gonna pull the carburetor off and then we're going to clean that all up with some carburetor cleaner and not really do a, a carburetor rebuild as much as do a carburetor cleaning and see if that gets us up and running, which I think probably will. So pretty simple, these covers here, pull off and lift up. You can set that out of the way. You can see that I've got some oil and things going on here, so I need to do some checking on that as well. I think this is just blow by or blow out from around the cap and things like that, but I do need to check that. I'll clean all of that up after I get it running. You know, run it and see if any I can find where any of the oil's coming out. I probably won't do that because I'm not gonna be using the generator to be honest because we're running off of solar. I just wanted this to be running because, hey, why not just in case? We're in that just in case right now because we need uh, our refrigerator to work and that's a whole nother story. But anyways, very, very simple to get the carburetor off of these things. You're gonna pull off the air cleaner. This is where you're gonna pull your air cleaner out if you ever need to get and replace your air filter, which you should do every now and then. This one's fairly clean because I just replaced it probably two years ago and then haven't used it. There's four bolts in here and I already loosened those off before I started the video so that you guys didn't have to see me playing around with those. So we're gonna take the four of those off. Then we're going to uh, yank the carburetor off. The carburetor is actually held on by these other two up here. So it's pretty quick and easy process. And we're kind of do some of this real time and some of it I'll do some fast forwarding in that to, uh, so that you don't get bored while this is happening. 
Those are the four screws. I'll set them aside and then this will come off. There's a tube here, which is your input tube and your blow by tube is up in here. So both of those need to come off. So you're gonna kind of pull the blow by tube off first and then the bottom tube, just lift that up and then set that off to the side. Your carburetor is now loose and, and will come off. Now there's an electrical connector on here. There's a solenoid on the bottom. You're going to pull that solenoid off and it should just be able to wiggle and come off, which it does. This has got a, one of those special clamps on it. I'm gonna try and save that clamp. And uh, the only other thing we have to worry about is your choke throttle assembly uh, thing back in the back here. So this, uh, just give it a little wiggle. You got two electrical connectors here as well. I forgot about those. These two electrical connectors pop these off. You can't put them on wrong. One's big, one's small, so you don't have to worry about that. All right. And we're just gonna drop this thing down, keep wiggling it until I can figure a way off of those two bolts. There we go. And then on the side here, you've got a spring on the side and a little like a, like a J hook. And you should be able to wiggle the carburetor down and off the J hook. I don't know what the official term for that is called. And then there's also another little hook that's got a spring on it. And that you should be able to just pull that spring off. We're gonna grab a, uh, I don't know what that looks like. Maybe a 13 or a 14 millimeter. It is a 14 mil. And we're just gonna unscrew that. And we'll just turn the carburetor around that thing to, to screw that, unscrew that. Oh, it's actually gonna come off easier than I thought. And again, make sure you're wearing your best clothes when you're doing this. You know, nice shorts, nice shirt. Something that's gonna, you know, really upset the wife when, when you get that, when you get dirty. So that's it. That's your carburetor out. It's a very, very simple device. And now we're gonna go put it on the table and clean it. Probably not the kitchen table. I don't think I'll get away with that. Before doing any kind of carburetor cleaning, I highly recommend that you grab your favorite beverage to sustain you through the repair. Mm. Dr. Pepper cream soda. Still don't know what I think about that. We're gonna start off by taking off the, the bowl of this, the fuel bowl. And that requires a wrench of some sort because of this solenoid. That's looking like a 14, maybe a 15. I guess I'm gonna use the 15 since I didn't bring the 14 from over on the other side. Yeah, 15. And just a nice little twist of that. We're gonna have some fuel pour out here. So I think I'm gonna just kind of pop over to the side here and uh, do this so I don't put fuel on the table that we use quite a bit. And I just noticed a washer flip out of there too, so I need to grab that. Make sure when you're taking these things apart, you're watching for these little pieces. All right, so this, this little washer goes inside the bowl and goes on top of the jet there. So, I don't know if you can see that in there or not, I think so. So when you pull this off, that actually falls out. And there's another one as well that goes on the top of this and goes up to the bottom of that bowl. So make sure you keep those two. This is the solenoid. And this may be a problem because the solenoid pin is down inside of here. And I think it's supposed to be sticking up. You know what, after looking at this, uh, I'm a dumbass. This has to come off. The, uh, the jets have to come off uh, before I'll be able to see that solenoid. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go get my 14 millimeter wrench. Cause that's a 15. Got a small set of vice grips. Let me see if those are small enough to go in there. Oh, I think they are. Yeah, that'll work. All right, take these jets off of here. There we go. Now we can see that solenoid. 
And see, that solenoid's working pretty slow. And I think it's supposed to move fast. So we'll spray that a little bit with some carb cleaner and then uh, see how it works after that. All right, so you can see it moves a lot faster now. You can even see there's some gumming around there. So I'll, I'll take and wipe that up and get that, but that's working a lot better. And uh, we might even let that soak a little bit in some carburetor cleaner to make sure that's moving as well as it should. All right, that solenoid is working like a champ now. And the uh, next thing I'm gonna do is clean these, these jets. Now I will confess, I, I clean these jets before uh, when, I, when this thing wasn't working right. When I couldn't get it started like months ago and thought that might be the problem, but that, that didn't handle it. So these, these jets are actually not that bad right now, but I am going to take uh, the cap, fill it with some carburetor cleaner and let that soak a little bit more. One of the other things we're gonna clear out is the, the jet here. It's not really a jet. I don't know what, it's just kind of a valve. Uh, these things have an altitude thing on them so that if you are at higher altitudes, you can get the uh, carburetor to run better at that altitude. When you get up at higher altitudes, obviously less oxygen. So uh, the carburetor will run uh, a lot more rich. So you turn this and it'll, it'll lower the amount of fuel that's getting used. So uh, you're, so you don't run rich. So when we're at zero, we're going to literally turn that to zero and we're good here. But that valve is what allows fuel to flow up into the upper jets. So I'm going to clean that out there uh, just to see if that might be the issue. I don't know if that just pulls off or how that comes out, but I don't know. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll take off this little screw here. That's not an adjustment screw. It's just a screw that allows you to empty the fuel bowl. You know, if you're staying, if you're leaving your RV for a long time, you should open this up all the way, drain the fuel bowl. And obviously I didn't do that. So this takes the jet, that bottom jet out. We'll clean that up. We'll clean up everything that's in there. Give it a few shots of carb cleaner and hope that that stuff is all. Yeah, you can even see in here, there's some discoloration in there and I'm assuming this is kind of gel in here fuel that has gelled so we'll clean all that up in there as well all right I cleaned up all the bowl too um, just used a wire brush a little bit of carb cleaner and make sure that's nice and clean inside out yeah all the discoloration is gone so yeah that was all uh, I gonna get a little bit more off the needle in there but you can tell that that was part of it being gummed up so that's, uh, that's crazy. Uh, and again, if, if you don't know how to use a wire brush to clean this up, this probably isn't a project you should be uh, attacking. But a little cleanup and we're good to go. All right, the, this is your float and there's a valve under here as well. And I'm gonna take that out and clean it. The pin that's in here, yeah, it looks like it's round on one end and kind of somewhat square on the other end. So we'll assume that it goes out that way. I'll uh, just push on it a little bit and see if it'll pop out or I break this. <laughs> okay, it popped out. Hopefully that was the way it's supposed to go out. Uh, we'll just make sure we put it back in that way. Yeah. And let me see, how does that float go on there? It's just on a little, yeah, it, it's just got a little gap in there and it slides into this from this side. You're not gonna be able to see that, that there and it slides in and out of that track. So that's all that works. These things are pretty simple devices really. I think I'm getting that dirtier with my hands than it was. And that is a plastic or a rubber tip. So that looks pretty good as well. I mean, I don't expect the top of this carburetor to be too bad. Most of the gummy stuff comes in the bottom, but that's, that's looking pretty good. 
we'll just, uh, you know what I'm gonna do too, is take the upper jet out. I mean, I could probably clean this by just spraying in there, but I'm gonna take that top jet out too. I'm assuming it's gonna be off the top of this. Let's see, I'm gonna take that gasket. Nah, I'm not gonna take that off. If the gaskets are good, leave them be, because yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that gasket. I am gonna clean the top of this off a little bit before I yank that off and try and make sure no dirt goes down in the carburetor inadvertently and make it worse than it already is. So we're just gonna unscrew these through three screws. Couple little taps, and hopefully we don't destroy any gaskets coming off of there. No, it looks like we did okay. And yeah, you can see this is where all the little channels are. Looks like an ant farm, but that's where all the fuel channels are, and so that's where some gum could happen. This looks really, really clean in there. I am going to use, you want to be careful what, what kind of screwdrivers you're using in these carbs. That one is not going to fit. Try a different one. And you do not want to bust up the top of these jets. I don't think this is going to go down in there. Yeah, I think I got it. Again, you want to be super careful with that, but it came out. I probably should have went to a little smaller screwdriver. There's that jet. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that same discoloration on the bottom, so I'm assuming that's some kind of gel that is in there. So we'll clean that up. We'll take out this bottom one now too. I don't know what these are called. I'm not a carburetor expert by any means. And by the way, if you're this far into the video, never do anything that I tell you to do when it comes to fixing this kind of stuff. It's just safer not to listen to anything I tell you. But let's see if this screwdriver will go down in here and get this one as well. Eh, it goes down in there, but let's see. Eh, I don't think that's, that's small enough. So I'm gonna get a different screwdriver and I'll be back. The screwdriver that wound up working perfectly is this multi-screwdriver I have because of the how slim this is. It went right down in just perfect and popped that out. So it was went just in enough to pop that uh, to pop that jet out and again I don't know what this is this is the actually the jet holder not the jet so you can see there's a flat I don't know if you can see that there's a flat on that end and that's what we use to get that out so worked good so now we're just gonna spray this whole thing out clean all these out again some discoloration there so that's telling me that's gelled up so we're just gonna hit all of this with some carburetor cleaner hit this with all carburetor cleaner inside try to clean it out the best we can make sure all these like these are sticking here and so we'll check the throttle side of it we'll check the choke side of it we'll just make sure all these things are working as smooth as possible you know you're doing a good job when the carburetor cleaner kicks up and sprays you in the face so I was wrong about this one choke plate. It is supposed to return on its own. It is spring loaded and it wasn't doing that before. So it is now working perfectly, right? So they get gummed up on the sides, but it is closing a lot better than it was. It really wasn't closing at all before. And now it's closing almost all the way. And I'll hit it with a little bit more cleaner just to make sure. But looking good so far. Okay, now I don't have a, a cleaner kit with me in the RV. So what I do is I'll take one of these bristles from the wire brush, straighten it out off to the side, and I'll use that because it's small enough that it'll uh, get into the jet and just push it. You just push it all the way through. Just make sure that that jet's clean and just keep rotating it to the next jet clean it then to the next jet 
clean it. You just don't want to use something that's bigger. You don't want to open these things up more than they are because, well, they're not meant to be bigger than they are. So this is nice and small. It's just making sure it's clean and then I'll look through them, blow through them. That one, see, I can see some junk in there. So we'll just do a little bit of that and then we'll blow through them once we've loosened them up. And then we'll start the assembly process again. I'm also gonna spray this a little bit and then I'm just gonna use this other wire brush that I stole out of Lorena's kitchen and I'm using it to clean the carburetor. She'll never see it again. Just to get any other little stuff off of it. If I had a little mini wire brush, I could do that too. So it looks good down through the middle. I don't know if you'll be able to get that on camera. Oh yeah, you can see down through the middle there. And then the, the holes, uh, I doubt the camera will pick up on that, but we can see through the holes as well. So yeah, that they're looking good. Everything's looking good. Everything's looking nice and clean. So now we'll start reassembling. So that's nice and clean. We'll start with this jet holder or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. We'll drop that down in there and we're going to go nice and easy with that. And then we'll drop the other one in from the other side. I don't want to work with a, one of Lori's screwdrivers from her kit. Okay, the jets are in. We'll put this cap back on. Screw that back in. Okay, jets are in, tops on float pin in that we'll put that in the float valve goes in the slot and it's gone forever no it's not make sure that's got nothing on it actually we'll hit it with a carb cleaner just to make sure there's no dirt on it so let's try that again into the slot just keep it tilted back a little bit then we drop it down and let the valve go into the little slot there into the hole and then we put the pin in the exact opposite way it went came out with the square end on that side drop it through there nice and easy or you hope nice and easy once it's lined up it goes pops right through it's just line getting it lined up at first that's the the issue here's where you're kind of second guessing if I pulled it out the right way or not. There you go. It's just getting that thing first lined up is tough. Ooh, it looks like it might have had a little dirt in it actually. Uh, I think that's what maybe happened was it had dirt in it from when I was spraying all over it. We're gonna take this and just push that pin in, make sure that pin's in pretty good. Perfect. And there you go. Again, this stuff isn't that hard, folks. Just make sure you put it back together the way you took it apart. And if you have to stop and take pictures every now and then to remember what's what, then do that. Like I've got the uh, pin still out of the, the float bowl. I forgot to clean this, so I'm gonna clean this and then I'll get the float bowl in. Okay. This is not gonna affect the way the carburetor runs. This just allows fuel out of the bowl in case that you need to do maintenance and things like that. Like I could have opened the bowl first, opened this first and had the um, fuel flow out before I took the bowl apart. But you know, what fun is that? It would be leaking if this was an issue, but it still wouldn't really prevent your engine from running correctly, so. All right, and remember, we've got the two, two washers. One goes on the bottom, one goes on the inside. We'll clean those up. You can see again, our solenoid there is working much better. So this solenoid, what this does is when you cut the engine off or cut the switch for the, the generator shut off, it actually cuts the fuel off. It might even cut it off this way or it cuts it off this way, I'm not sure which way. but it cuts fuel off, so there's no more fuel flowing into your to your cylinders, so you don't get that nasty pop that you used to get on the old school lawnmowers and generators and things like that. Okay, so before I put the bowl together, I gotta finish putting the solenoid together. So 
that's the solenoid there it's working great the jets on this have all been cleaned out so that's working great there we're just gonna drop that back on top screw that in i think that'll be snug enough it doesn't you know this stuff does not need to be just nailed down tight let me see if my crescent wrench will fit in there and it does crescent wrench will actually work better so we'll snug it up with a crescent wrench and that perfect good old crescent always got to have a good crescent wrench ha handy for certain things all right now this can go back in the bowl we're going to have this go on first okay over like that then up in the bowl and then we can drop the other washer over the top then you want this says top and front so you know this is going to go on the front by the way try to save that gasket if you can the gasket that's in there it didn't really come out at all so we'll find out hopefully it doesn't leak when we get everything back together we'll find out soon enough screw up in there and we'll put that close to the front as possible we'll finger finger snug that then we'll get our 15 mil on there tighten it up a little bit more that's it so the carburetor's clean. Now we just need to make sure we don't have any extra parts laying around. Looks good. Don't see anything other than screwdrivers left on the table here. So that's good. So now we'll head back over to the generator, throw this thing on and keep our fingers crossed that it, that it works. I think we're good. Okay, as we assemble this, there's a couple of things you wanna watch for. There is a little grommet that needs to stay in there so that when this goes in, this goes in and, and then hooks in there like that, that grommet has to stay in there. So that's gonna pull and push on that rod. So you gotta make sure that little grommet stays and it's easy for that thing to pop out. It actually popped out on me and I had to dig it out and it's trying to pop out right now. So make sure that thing stays in there and the little hook spring here, that little spring stays in there when you're hooking this back up. So super important. All right, this thing's all cleaned up, good to go. Uh, hopefully this, this will do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reinstall this fuel line and notice that we were able to, to save that, that clamp there instead of replacing it with a like an alligator clamp. So we're just gonna put that back on that way. A Little bit awkward, but not too bad. Just spin that on there. And that clamp will probably turn a little bit as well so that we can get that tightened back up. Okay, snug that up. We have got to put this spring on before we can uh, put anything else on. We're going to bring the spring up first, hook the spring on, that's on, then we're going to finagle this rod so that it goes in and hooks and we should be good there. And again, make sure that uh, that back grommet stays on. Here's where it takes a little bit of finagling and wiggling to get this stuff right. And there, I just lost that grommet. So that's gonna be a problem because it's gonna be down in where it's gonna be super hard to find. Oh boy, that is not gonna be fun to find. These uh, mirrors are invaluable when it comes to this kind of stuff. 20 minutes later. <laughs> uh, to go and find something like that in a store here in Mexico, it's gonna be super challenging so let me see if i can still dig into this and then we'll get back to you guys the next morning all right as we left off yesterday i was down a grommet and was wondering on how i was going to fix it well this is a like a cable holder you know for like a computer or something but i was looking at this and i was thinking all right this could go in the hole let me see if i can show you go in the hole and work like the grommet would. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this over 
so that it's a little thicker, wrap it around the, the choke arm and then put this through and hopefully it will work as a grommet until I can get someone to bring me one down. It's probably about a $2 grommet and uh, finding one from Onan shouldn't be that hard, but getting it down here in Mexico is. So let me give that a cut and uh, see how we can attach it on the generator and we'll go from there. Okay, you can see right here that uh, I actually super glued this uh, little rubber piece on here to work as a grommet. And I think instead of folding it over like I was going to do and gluing it on the other side as well, I'm just going to slice it off and then I'm going to wrap a piece of uh, duct tape around it just to double reinforce it so that it doesn't come off. Even though I think the crazy glue will hold it, I don't want that to come off. And I think the, the tape will be a, another uh, safety measure. So I'm gonna do that. There's so, a small hole. We hook the little spring like that. And I think it was actually the other way. So we're gonna do that. It was through this way and out. put the little hook through there and that'll work as our throttle rod. I think that'll work just fine until I can find a, a real one. So let me get this thing put back together and we'll give it a shot. Bring the old carburetor over here and then we get our J rod in there or whatever the heck it's called. I'm sure you guys will correct me for whatever that is called. That one in. Let's get the electrical back on, the electrical connectors back on. Make sure those aren't touching that. This can be down to zero. That's on, these are on. So now we just need to put this in. We'll put that bottom hose in first. Make sure you're on the blow by up on the top. Yeah, it looks like that's all good. So there, simple as that. Then we get our nuts and bolts back into the air box. It is another windy day and I should be kiting. Get our air box and carburetor stuff finger tight. And then we'll just tighten it up. Again, these things just have to be snug. They don't have to be really bad. You do not want to break those off. We're going to put our air filter back in. Make sure all the dirt's out of that thing. Slide that back up underneath there. To there. And now the moment of truth. We're going to prime this first. So to prime this, you hold that button down and it's pumping fuel up in to the carburetor. And it may take a couple to get fuel up in there. All right, no luck. So let's make sure we've got fuel up here. We should have, not a lot of fuel. That should be pouring out right now. All right. Well, let's pull this off and see what's going on. Tell me there's still a lack of fuel. I know there's fuel coming out of here because I've checked that before. I'm gonna pull that carburetor off again and have another look. There's gotta be something caught up in there. Okay, I wound up taking this jet out here. This is kind of like your, your main flow when uh, fuel first comes into the, into the carburetor. And this is also where this uh, little piece goes on for your altitude adjustments. So what I did is I just uh, marked where this was, screwed it all the way in to get my base point, 
and then I screw this all the way back out again and clean that jet really, really well. And now we're gonna fire it up again. It was pretty gummed up and I knew that when I had the bowl apart. I don't know if you guys remember, that was the discolored area in there. And here, there's some discoloration in there and I'm assuming this is kind of gel in here, fuel that has gelled. I really couldn't get to the to the jet at the time. Why I didn't take it out and clean it, I don't know. I thought maybe I could clean it good enough just from in there, but um, it was still pretty gummed up when I pulled it out of there. So let's uh, put the cover back on that and then uh, we'll try this again. Let's prime it. Shouldn't need to be primed too much. Just a little bit. So if you look there at the charger, come back a little bit, you can see that we're at uh, 48 and a half, 48 amps, and it's gonna fluctuate. The solar is still on as well, so that affects it a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. That's pretty decent, but 40, approximately 48 amps coming in. Uh, batteries are at 73% right now, so we're bulk charging, 14.3 uh, volts, which is, which is fine. Um, because it should be charged into, I think, 14.7 uh, before it goes into a float. So bulk, it's gonna go to 14.7 and then, and then it'll float after that. So yeah, we're, we're good. We can also look at the uh, system here and you can see that the batteries, the glare is nasty, but batteries 14.6 down here uh it's showing the load is 120 volts ac in 121 volts so that's actually showing me that if i've got ac in that's showing me that either shore power is on or the generator is running so generator running 120 volts which is perfect and we're good to go all right so there it is. That is the uh, carburetor cleaning on your Onan Marquee Gold 5500. Now, we did a pretty thorough cleaning of that. I probably could have got away with popping that valve out there and just cleaning that. So literally could have been the problem right, right there. But pulled it apart carburetor is all clean now there's no surging or any of that stuff so we're good to go all right so i hope that video will help you out if you're having any issues with your onan generator and this should work for several of the generators ours as you saw in the video is an onan 5500 the marquee gold but it should work with a variety of onan generators I actually work with a variety of generators in as a whole you can usually take the carburetor apart on most small engines pretty easily and get them cleaned up pretty easily. So if you have a lawnmower that's running poorly, this could be the issue. Uh, just some cleaning of that carburetor or like a mini bike or I don't know, any other kind of small engine, this could be an issue. So a simple uh, removal, cleaning of the carburetor and a reinstall of the carburetor should work just fine. So thank you for watching. It would be great if you hit that like button. It would also be cool if you hit the subscribe button, stick around with us, get to know us a little bit more and maybe see some more how-to videos. Hopefully we'll get back into doing more of our travel stuff here in the new future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in the next video.